Hello kids and welcome back to my channel. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing not one but two of my favorite people in the whole world about the part that they play in the LGBTQ plus community. So let's just get right to it because I'm pretty excited. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the scene of like how you grew up. I'm Zach, I'm 24, and scene of growing up. It was in Logan, Utah. We grew up Mormon, so we grew up in a Christian family. Uh, seven siblings, so there's a lot of kids running around. My name is Chase, I am 24. I would say I was raised Christian, but more outside of the church, so we learned more of the basics, you know, like. Testament, just being able to respect one another. I grew up with a family that was very athletic. Every Sunday, we would always go out, go for hikes, things like that. But then also, in my neighborhood, I lucked out with having really close friendships. My closest friend, that still friends, for about 22 years now, we met when we were three years old. So I was able to build a really strong childhood friends. At what age did you realize that there was something different about you? What was that like and what was your reaction? There was like two different times because like when I was in elementary school I liked boys but I didn't I didn't like notice anything because you know you're so young and at such a young age so it didn't really matter nothing really came from it. So in middle school it was more that's when I started recognizing those feelings and what they were and that's when I also started to hide them around that age. So I would say for when I kind of realized that I was slightly different was probably I want to say elementary school kind of in my kindergarten through second grade. I was hanging out with all the popular kids like the ones like the guys and the girls and um, all of a sudden, like, I realized I started hanging out with more of the girls because I felt more comfortable hanging out with girls than guys. Over time, um, my guy friends kind of just, like, departed. Like, they weren't in my life. And that's kind of when I kind of realized that I wasn't the same. I also realized, like, watching, like, football games or baseball games... I was so fascinated watching guys. And also, my best friend from my childhood that I was telling you about, she was a tomboy when I was growing up. She was a boy. She always dressed up like a boy and everything. I actually, it was kind of funny, I always said he, then she. I was like, oh, I'm going to hang out with him. My mom's like, you meant she? And I'm like, Oh yeah, she! Since I guess that's kind of when I started. How was it growing up with these feelings? Did you hide them? Did you try to change them? How did you deal with that? I don't think anyone deals with it very well <laughs> at such a young age, but I did hide them for a long time and try and, I guess, pray the gay way. Lots of people say that. Like in the, when they grow up Christian and they have these feelings, they try and pray. And I do remember lots and lots of nights just like crying to God, just begging to take him away. And to, I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted to fit in and be like the other guys that were in the church or the school that we were going to. I just wanted to be like them and like sports and talk about that and then talk about the girls. And for the life of me, I couldn't do it and the feelings never went away. Yeah, so when I was in middle school, that's when I started learning a lot more terminology, like, oh, that's gay, like, oh, she's a lesbian. So that's when I started searching, Google searching, all that, and kind of understanding a little bit more about the terminology. I started to get bullied by a couple people. After being bullied a lot, and people telling me like, oh, you're gay, like, you hang out with all the girls. I started questioning what my thoughts were. Also, my dad, he's very Christian. Um, 
well, more Protestant to be exact. He would always also say a lot of slurs and really rude statements to the gay community. And that's when I kind of realized I need to not talk as much about the community just because I was confused. At what age did you come out? Who did you tell first and what was their reaction? It was a year after my mission, so I must have been 21. Yeah, 21, I came out to my sister Liz, whose video I missed. <laughs> Your reaction was exactly what everyone wants. You weren't shocked, you weren't upset, you were just, okay, like, this is you, this is okay, let's move on, let's, what do we do now? Like, it wasn't, and it, like, oh no, it was like the right reaction, and that's why I knew I could come out to you first. And then it just kind of trickled down from there uh, to one family member to another, and then it just kind of like spread throughout <laughs> the whole family. It was actually, I want to say junior year of high school. I had a lot of stress, just school, trying to figure out who I was. I was thinking that I was bi at the time because I was dating a girl and I liked guys. I personally was depressed at that time. I wrote in a little notebook that just told all my thoughts, saying that I'm bi, all my other emotions, why I'm not going to come out or anything like that. That helped release some of my, my emotions, but I want to say three to four months after, it came rushing back. Like, I couldn't sleep. I, I was shaking, honestly. My sister was downstairs in her room. I just knocked on the door and I was like, hey, do you have a moment to talk? And she's like, yeah, for sure, what's going on? That's when I started to have a full on breakdown and told her that I was bi. It was quite emotional, but I knew that she would love me either way. The crazy thing is, is that I thought this was her first time knowing about me, but she's like, oh, Chase, like, I know that already. Like, I'm like, what? How do you know? She's like, so, you know, I was in your room and I found a little notebook. I realized that was kind of your diary, but I saw that you said, I'm bisexual and I immediately closed the notebook and put it away and I was just kind of waiting for you to come to tell me. At that moment, I just knew. I was like, oh my gosh, you are the best sister ever. She's my only sibling, so knowing that my only sibling in my life said that she's there supporting me from day one, just, it made a little light in my heart which which grew. The next person I told was my aunt. She was basically my second mom. Don't get me wrong, I trust my parents, but I was scared. I didn't know what they were going to do or say, especially my dad. My dad and I, we weren't on the strongest terms at that time. When I told my aunt, she's like the most bubbly person you would ever met. She came in open arms and she's like, you know, Chase, like whoever you are, I will love you every second of your life. How has it been since coming out? How have the people you surround yourself with treat you? It's been three years and I've definitely seen a lot change with people and I've watched relationships change. Um, with some people that are close to me. Because like when I first came out, it was really, really hard. I felt almost like alone alone for the first time. And I didn't know who I could turn to and I didn't know what I could do. And so I was, was reaching out to the wrong kind of people or the wrong kind of things um, to try and fill that hole for a while. And that's when certain family members, like we weren't communicating and it just kind of, ties were kind of cut off between um, people that were really close to me. And that is what made it really, really hard. 
but as the years went on and I became more comfortable with me and they became more comfortable with me we were able to like mend those ties and bring them back together in high school I kind of kept it on the down low I didn't say anything to anyone really as I got older and learned more about myself I started to grow friendships that I knew that I could trust the person. They would tell me probably the deepest secret that they ever had in their lives and they will open their truth to me. That's when I realized that I was building a support team and I didn't even know it. So when I came out, it came out when my aunt passed away. Um, she committed suicide um, due to bipolarity. She decided to not take her medication and it was probably the most heart-reaching, heart-crushing moment of my life. When she passed away, I literally thought I lost my support team. Like, I knew my sister knew, but I lost one one person that knew about me and now I was scared out of my mind. Before I knew about my aunt's past, my parents asked my sister, is there anything that we need to know about Chase? My sister, she's like, Chase is bi. He loves men and women. The moment my sister told the truth to my parents, my parents changed from them thinking that I was straight, it totally switched. Like they knew that I was crushed for my aunt. And my dad realized all the arguments, the fights that we ha had um, about homosexuality and everything like that. They realized that I'm the same. I'm not a different human being. How does it feel to be fully accepting of who you are, finally? It feels really good. Because <laughs> for so many years of just feeling like you're not good enough, putting yourself down, you feel ashamed. I mean, I even felt so guilty for just thinking a guy was cute and just felt so guilty for having that feeling and that thought cross my mind. Once I came out and I started really understanding it a little bit more and what did it mean to have these feelings and to be gay, I understood that it wasn't like I was asking for those thoughts to come into my mind. It wasn't like I was seeking them out. It, they just came. And you know, you're walking down the street and you see someone cute and it just comes crosses your mind. And so I, I've learned that I've had nothing to be ashamed about and I've had nothing to feel guilty about. And I even remember seven months later, I think, I had a new job. I was in Salt Lake working it. And so my whole family, extended family, everyone knew and more people were finding out like on Instagram and stuff. And I was at work one day and I just, my work's really slow, so I had some time to think, <laughs> and I just really was talking to myself and said the words out loud that I'm gay and that's okay. And really that's like the defining moment of when I like accepted it finally and accepted myself and started like, I can't control what other people do, I can control what other people, how they react or to this news or whatever but i can choose how i react and so that's what i did and ever since that moment that like weight of like carrying this like burden around that was so unnecessary went away um there has been times when i've experimented and learned a lot more about who i was ever since coming out that i was gay when I realized that I was actually more interested in men and grew my support team the moment my aunt passed away, my family just like, you know, I'm we're here for you. I realized that 
I have a great community of friends and support and I realized that I can be myself and being able to be yourself and knowing that there's people supporting you even by having just a small group of friends and I'm telling you I have a small group of friends they love every part of me and I love every part of them there's always some differences we know that we can trust each other and that we can be honest. It's pretty dang awesome. <laughs> Is there any advice you could give to those who have a harder time accepting the LGBTQ plus community? Something that I've done in my life and I've tried to work better on is trying to understand someone's perspective. How do they see it? Because there's still things that I don't completely understand or are, I don't completely um, agree with, but I do know how to support and show love to them because I understand it from a different point of view. And then also just realizing that we're all people, we're all human, we're all the same. There's the song on K-Love, the Christian um, radio station that is called We All Believe the Same. And I love that song because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we all live, we're here to live a life, and then we all die. We're all the same. So why can't we all treat each other the same? Like it comes down to just 100% love. Not, you know, don't give them a little bit of love and then that's okay. Like it needs to be 100%. So you want to be able to show that support for them 100%. And that doesn't always mean that you agree with their decisions that they make, and that is okay. You know, we're allowed to live the lives that we want and make the decisions that we want and live the life that how we want to live it. And not everyone's going to agree with it, and that's just a part of being human, and that's okay. But it doesn't mean that you can't support and love them still at the same time. One other advice or part two advice I would give to someone who is struggling to accept someone else who is part of the, this community, is just don't stop being interested in them as a person. When you see them, talk to them, invest in them, you know, ask them about how they're doing, um, if they're dating anyone, you know, because I think that's one of the biggest things that people stop doing is they just stop talking <laughs> all together and it, it hurts so much. And they can say that they love the person, but the person can't really fill it because they're not investing in them. And so that's like one of the biggest things that I have found is the people who are willing to invest in me are the people that I feel and recognize their love the most. Being able to understand the person's perspective and their personality is very key. Assuming could do more harm than good because assuming the worst of the person or assuming that because you learned some new information about your friend or family member, it doesn't mean that they are a horrible person. It's that you're learning new information about that person and that you could be disappointed at first and confused. Changing that confusion into researching, learning more about someone that's gay, lesbian, queer, transgender, and trying to understand what they are going through before turning the page and throwing down hate or discrimination. Everyone is trying to figure who they are and being able to give them open arms and just giving them respect is probably the number one thing on understanding the LGBTQ community. All right guys, so as you can see, this is 
one of my favorite videos I've ever made so far. My goal for my YouTube channel and kind of for my life in general right now is to really dive deep into emotions and like Zach and Chase talked about perspective. I was inspired to make this video from um, Lovely the Band. That is my favorite band right now. I feel like they talk about a lot of real emotions that a lot of us feel and I went to their concert a few weeks ago and they mentioned that their song Maybe I'm Afraid has a music video and that it is about the LGBTQ plus community. So it took me about a week and a half but I was able to watch it and I was honestly just filled with so much emotion because I am now a part of this community because my brother is gay and I have so much love for this community. Like, I I had gay friends in high school and like I loved them and I never really questioned them or I didn't really have that hard of a time like supporting them but I feel like the love I have now for this community is like stronger than it's ever been and so I really encourage you guys to go watch that video. I can link it down in the description if you want to check it out, which I think you kind of do. <laughs> it's really good. I love that band. But I just wanted to end by kind of telling you guys what I hope you can gain from this video. I hope that you guys can gain perspective and I hope that really that this can become normal for everyone because it's not some bizarre thing like people sometimes make it out to be. It's really very normal. These are two people who are in love and that's normal. If you personally have a hard time with supporting those around you or if you yourself are having a hard time coming to terms with your sexuality, um, I want you to know that I'm a safe place to land and so are these two. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below and make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing some more Pride videos um, this month and I'm also just really going to focus on a lot of deeper content for you guys. Things that are important to me, things that make me happy, and things that we can hopefully connect better on. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next video. <laughs>